Well, hello there. Good morning. Shh, the boys are still asleep. For something a little different this morning, come pack up with us. A buttercup. That's not where your toothbrush goes. Where does your toothbrush go? No, no, no. That's not... No. You know where it goes. No, right now we're going to focus on packing up our backpack. No, what do you suppose you need to do now? All right, now where does that bag go? Good job. You got it. That's perfect. Good. Now where does this go? All right. You're not finished. I still see a few more things over here that you need to pack into your backpack. Uh, nope. You can put it right here next to your other one. It's empty, but that's okay. Oh, not done. I still see more stuff there. Wait, do you carry this or does that? No, you do. Uh, don't worry about it. Just carry that one. They're all group water bottles, so it doesn't matter. Okay, Buttercup, can you check your spout to make sure it's full? Okay. Sonic, is your spout full? Uh-oh. Okay, hold on. Let's, nope, stop. Let's rewind. There's something else that still needs to be dealt with. That's right. Yours is full. Okay, I filled it already. Okay, put that where it belongs. Uh, hold on. Hold on. What do you have to do to that trash bag after you put something in there? Very good. Okay, fill up your spout. This is a privy tour for anyone who's curious. This is actually a really nice privy because it has a locking door and the wood is like good and solid. Okay, go in. So there's a pit toilet. This is like duff. And after you take a poo, you're supposed to take a couple handfuls of that and throw it like on top of the, um, the poo in there. And all that like yucky stuff you see around the lid, that's not poo, that's actually duff. But, um, in there is is the poo this one's got like handles which is nice it's even like handicap accessible although i'm not sure if you were in a wheelchair how you would not really encouraged or supposed to like pee in here but you know sometimes that happens and then that's it oh where does all the stuff go it goes underneath there and it like composts and I think some volunteers or employees have to like churn it around and that's like a really gross job oh yeah so over there those are the different compost bins at the because when you're composting it goes through like different levels of of de decomposition yeah so anyway it was very ecologically sound I think I just had to make a quick video to show this beautiful rock work here on the side of the trail. I mean, people must have, a group, maybe CCC, WPA, must have worked so hard to get these rocks in place like this, just to make this trail neat and safe. We've got a big downhill today. We're coming out of the Smokies. I put both knee braces on. I've got the more intense one on my right, and then I've got the less intense one, just the patellar support band, on my left.
the slingshot her. I put a cap of water down for the bee to see if it wants to take a drink. Oh, it's taking a drink. Looks like it wants a drink. Oh, it's taking it. Look at the thirsty bee. I love this. We've gone down low enough now that the leaves are out on the trees. It's all like a fluorescent explosion. And I love that. And it's hot too. Whoa. I don't know what these purple flowers are. They're really pretty. Just Epic moment, we're leaving the Smokies. We're out of the Smokies. Yeah, we're leaving the Smokies. Oh, yes. so wow, now we can camp wherever we want again, it, except for certain spots. It's so green, it's so hot, we're down so low. I almost need to take my fleece off because it's... Look at Chestnut Branch Trail. Yeah. Chestnut. So that feels great. Yeah. We just... We just did the Smokies. That's kind of major. It's a big deal. We're looking at poison ivy. But what happens if I destroy one leaf? Not, not a good idea. Well, people think it's not. No, it's just that you're releasing the oils. So that it's the oils that make it shiny, I think, and it's the oils that give you a reaction. It's a very uncomfortable reaction for a lot of people. So, yeah, if you chop it, you're releasing the oils. Uh This is spring, right here. This is spring. Green and flowers and running creek. No ice in it. Smells like spring. Smells so good. This is like what we've been looking forward to for weeks, for a month. yet whether we're gonna stay here but we're gonna go check it out and see what it's like. He can scratch his back. Oh no, he did. There's bits and bobs in here. Bits and bobs. Don't touch it, Ned. Don't. Ned. Ned. All right, guys. After only two days in the woods this time, we are back in a hotel. And I will tell the story of why, but it has to do with a creepy hiker. So we're going to go get something to eat. We got to get to Walmart because of someone's lost gear and um then when we get back uh or maybe while we're out we will tell the story of why we're at this hotel so here's something that i don't know if it's showed enough online but it's town chores every time you go to town you have to do town chores and like for us that today, that means doing a little bit of a resupply, a small resupply, but it also means that Buttercup lost his fleece. So we have to search for a new fleece or synthetic shirt of some sort for Buttercup. So he has that layer that he can wear while he hikes, 
when it's really too cold to hike in a t-shirt, but it's too hot to hike in his puffy, or if it's raining and he can't get his puffy wet. So we're right now just like walking end to end in this town. We checked Walmart and they did not have anything that would even remotely do. Other things we need to do is like, we still need to get food. We still need to shower, do laundry, you know, all that stuff. Going into town can actually be really um, time consuming, even stressful endeavor if you've got a lot of chores to do, which like we do. So here we go. We're going to Marshall's. Come, no fleece at Marshall's. So I'm gonna have to find something online and have it shipped to like the next place where we're gonna stay. How's the food here? The food is great. Mexican food. We decided to go for Mexican. So good. We're walking back to our hotel after trying Walmart and trying Marshalls for the fleece. I did find one online that I think will work and I need to get Sonic a new pair of shoes anyway. So um, I'll go ahead and order them. So we just have to decide where to stay. Don't twirl that around buttercup. So we're going to tell now the story of the man who was engaging in behavior, unsafe and inappropriate. Okay, we'll start at the beginning of the story. Okay, first of all, we met this hiker very early on in our hike on like the first couple days and he just seemed normal like any other hiker. And then we didn't see him for like a month. Um, we were way ahead of him, but hey, Buttercup, stop it. As soon as he showed up at the shelter, he was like yelling at us. And then when it was becoming, coming out, we put on a fire. And I didn't think he wanted to see us, so we just went under his blankets. He was trying to spook Little Buttercup by making like, what? So he was making very weird sounds early in the morning. And over the night, he scared the Little Buttercup. I woke up before, actually, he, he did that, and I saw him. Then he was like, ah! And then I, when I went to sleep, when he was being gone, I, and then he just said, ah! And then I got scared and I, and I hopped out of bed. So here's what happened from my point of view. Okay, we walk up to the shelter and the boys are doing their thing. They play constantly while we hike. For the first two hours of the day, we're doing homeschool and they're working with me. And then for like an hour after that, they've got their ear their earbuds on because they're doing homeschool stuff like through podcasts or audiobooks. But after that, they're allowed to play. And do they play loudly? Yes, they do play loudly. We're in the middle of the woods and they're children. So they're fighting goblins, they're racing cars, they're doing all the all the stuff, like creative stuff that kids do. So as soon as we roll up to the shelter, the first thing he does is start yelling at the kids. Now look, I'm not gonna pretend I'm the perfect parent and don't ever yell at my kids. And I'm not even against other people yelling at my kids, but that was not necessary at that time. And you know, you can come and have a word with me and you could say, hey mom, you know, I noticed last night they were really loud, it kept me up, but dude, it's six o'clock in the evening. You're not asleep. You know, if you want to be way out in nature all by yourself, then maybe the Appalachian Trail is not the place for you because it's not a solitary nature experience. So then after he starts yelling at the kids, whatever, we just totally ignore him. Well, then in the middle of the night, this man starts making weird sounds directed towards my kids to try to scare them. And it did scare Buttercup. So this is a grown man who is trying to scare a six-year-old. So by the morning, he was still doing this, starting in the middle of the night all the way to the morning. So another hiker was like, hey, that's enough. You need to stop it. And so at that point, that's when he started, like, calling me names and um, saying very rude, misogynistic things. Um, today, our plan was to hike to Standing Bear Hostel and to stay there um, because that was just like the right amount of mileage for us and we were just going to stay there. But um, when we walked up there, I saw him there at the hostel and I was like, I'm not comfortable staying with this man. 
here at the hostel. And so, you know, and of course at the hostel, my kids immediately start running around and playing with the children who live at the hostel. And, you know, he probably didn't feel great about that, but you know, I'm sorry. Um, well, no, I'm not sorry. I'm not sorry. Uh, so I want to apologize to the hikers that we meet. I know that my kids are loud. I know that they can be obnoxious. I know that they can be a handful. They're two little boys with special needs and we're working really, really hard on it through a variety of things. You know, we've got behavior therapies, we've got medication. So we're, we're working really hard. We know. And if it's too much, like come and talk to me. And this is why the Smokies were so stressful for me, having to stay at the shelters and knowing that my kids were gonna be in there like irritating people. But that doesn't mean that like you start hurling names at me or trying to scare and intimidate them. You know, they're children. Yeah. So uh, that's the story of why we're here at this hotel tonight.